everyone and welcome once again here to God's house. We will have our Sunday service here at New Heart, New Spirit, Alpha Omega Holy Assembly. And this evening we are very excited to share a message with you, or Thomas will share a message with you about how God prepares us for the end times, how he purifies us like gold and um, yeah, the end time uh, is what we're preparing for. So I hope you will be blessed by this message and now I will give over to Sarah and Philip for worship. Thank you. Good evening. Let's praise God together today. We just want to worship Him because we know that He loves us and that His love never fails. We know that no matter what is happening all around us, no matter what is happening in our families, in our world, we know that Jesus never fails and that His love is all around us. He just covers us with His love. So today we want to worship Him because we know in these end times we need His love more than ever. So today we are going to worship Him. So I invite you to close your eyes and just to focus on His love before we start singing so that we can pray and thank Him for His love that never fails. Jesus, we thank You for Your love now. We thank You because You have never failed. We thank You because You have chosen each one of us. You have died for us. You have given your life for each one of us, Jesus. And you resurrected on that third day for us. So today we want to thank you. We want to thank that you called our names. We want to thank you for your love. Thank you for your strings of love that are reaching us, Jesus. And today we want to worship you. You are welcome here, Holy Spirit. You are welcome here, Jesus. We are here for you today to exalt your name and to wait for your coming, Jesus. So receive all worship, all praise, all majesty, all honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So we are going to worship Jesus now. Let's lift our voices and sing for him because his love is good and he never fails, amen.
Thank you for the worship. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Good evening, Holy Assembly. My wife, Elena, and I believe in proclaiming together in faith the Word of God when we are ministering at the beginning of a meeting. We're going to proclaim Zechariah 2, verse 5 to 9, which is, which is about the future joy of Zion and many nations. So here we go. For, For I, says, says the Lord, will, will be a wall, wall of fire, fire all around, around her, and, and I will be the glory in her midst. Up, up, up flee from, from the land of the north, north says, says the Lord. Lord. For, For I have spread you abroad like the four winds of heaven, says the Lord. Up, Zion, escape, you who dwell with the daughter of Babylon. For thus says the Lord of hosts, he sent me after glory to the nations which plunder you. For he who touches you, touches the apple of his eye. Today I have titled the message, End Time Precious That Shave Us. First of all, I want to proclaim one thing. The Lord loves Israel. There's no doubts about that. The Lord loves Israel. He speaks of Israel and Israelites more than 2,500 times in the Bible. I think it's come to talk so much about someone you have a heart for so heavenly father god almighty in jesus precious and glorious and beautiful and powerful name i thank you for this day lord i thank you for this evening i thank you for every heart that are here that are listening to these words today and i know that your presence is with everyone that are online as well in this moment now Praise the Lord from wherever you are. Sing for joy and worship Him. I thank you for this touch of heaven that only you can provide. Doesn't matter where you are, where in the world, where you are in this moment. I thank you for this hope that are only in you. Thank you. Thank you for this ability to hear your voice through your spirit, Holy Spirit. And help us tonight, help us tonight to hear your voice. Jesus, we love you. We want more of you. We want to know your heart. We want more of you. May everyone today hear and listen and feel your heart, your thoughts. So I thank you for everything you have done. I thank you for who you are. You are our Lord. You are our Savior. You are our promised land. Thank you, Jesus. We need you. We need you. Holy Spirit, we cannot do this today without you. Embrace every heart in this moment. I ask you to really embrace every heart. You know anyone. You know their circumstances. Help me now in this moment to deliver this message according to your perfect divine will. Help me. I cannot do this without you. Embrace every heart now. Meet us where we are. Meet me here. <laughs> 
meet everyone where they are now and take them from where they are to where you want them to be. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. <clears throat> yes, the end time pressures that shape us. Israel know how it feels. The divine work of shaping and forming God's people is the way He does it. Whether we understand it or not. So God, He shapes His people through divine pressure. Today we shall dive into God's word to discover the types of pressure in the end times and his divine intentions behind them. And one essential difference between the time that we are living in now and all previous times, it is actually Israel. It is Israel. Israel is once again a restored nation in their own land. In their own land. That has never been true since uh, the year 70 AD until about 1948 or 1950. And the situation never existed before. So when we read the prophecies of what the world will look like at the end of this age and the, and the events that, that bring the age to an end, we will find out, we will, we will realize that it will require the presence of Israel as a sovereign nation in their own land. And of course, there will be a great deal of spiritual resistance in this matter, of course. We are seeing now this with the events happening in the world right now. And as, as I said before, Israel and Israelites, they, the names, the words come up more than 2,500 times in the Bible. In the New Testament, the name Israel appears 79 times. 79 times. God's heart for Israel is very special. It is very special. If we go to the Old Testament scripture to Ezekiel 36 verse 24, it says, for I will take you from among the nations, gather you out of all countries, and bring you into your own land. Whose land? Their own land. People need to understand one thing. Whether they were, they were in the land, or they were outside the land, it was always their land. Because God gave it to them by an everlasting covenant. So if you contradict it, you, you don't have the word of God as authority. I have to say that. But they have been out of the land. But what God does, but what God, uh, does God say? He says, now. Now he says, I will take you from among the nations, gather you from all the countries, and bring you into your own land. Therefore, none of those prophecies could have been uh, fulfilled until Israel was reunited and their state restored. So the re the Reunion of Israel sets the stage for the final uh, drama, if you want, that will end this age.
if we jump to Jeremiah chapter 18 verses uh, 1 to 6 it says this is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord go down to the potter's house and there I will give you my message so I went down to the potter's house and I saw him working at the wheel but the pot he was shaping from the clay was broken in his hands so the potter formed it into another pot shaping it as it seemed best to him then the word of the Lord came to me O house of Israel cannot I do with you as this potter does declares the Lord like clay in the hand of the potter so are you in my hand O house of Israel this shows us what God is doing with Israel they are just like the pot Jeremiah saw in the potter's hand right the first time the potter tried to make the kind of vessel he, he wanted the pot was destroyed in his hands it didn't turn out the way he intended so the scripture says he went back did it once again and the second time he made the kind of jar he wanted it to be the Lord does not give up on Israel the Lord does not give up on Israel this is a clear indication of what God is doing with Israel the first time they did not become the vessel he wanted them to be they were destroyed in his hands it's God's work he didn't throw them away no absolutely not he keeps his promises but he simply decided in his own time in his own ways to make them into a part of his own design once again personally I think that's exactly what's happening with Israel in the times that we are living in I think he's doing it right now just in front of our eyes the pressure and strain on the clay from the potter's handiwork to mold it to shape it into a perfect pot is an expression of what Israel is going through but what can we say without God's prophetic word this is impossible to see it's impossible to see what's going on without the prophetic word of God but one thing is for sure as soon as one pressure is lifted from Israel then another is applied he makes them what he wants them to be through pressure and the pressure they have gone through throughout history is completely insane I mean if people cannot see what has happened to Israel throughout history and look in the Bible but still deny the existence of God in this I don't know what to say when God shapes its Israel it is a reflection of his love of his promises of his guidance of his 
to his chosen people. This includes the ecclesia, the called out assembly, what most people call church. Throughout divine pressure. In other words, he molds us, he shapes us into the kind of pot. If we are using the same wording as the scripture before. That he wants us to be. But by putting pressure on us. It's the exact same principle. When you are in Christ. The divine pressure. Which leads me to that I want to say something about the kinds of pressures that the church, the, the Ecclesia is facing and uh, God's purpose in bringing this pressure uh, and even persecution I think many will face in the nearest future. I think it's extremely important that we are prepared for all these things and that we understand what God is seeking to do in us through the pressure. There are two main uh, ways in which pressure comes against us. Two main, uh, what to call it, negative forms of, of pressure. The first one is described in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. Powers of this dark world and the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. The second is through the, the acceleration, degeneration of human character. And it's getting worse and worse. We talked about it last Sunday. Most of all because for men will be lovers of themselves, Scripture says. It was in Second Timothy where Paul mentioned 18 things that, uh, that are typical for the time that we are living in. For the time that we are facing the downfall of human character, a growing indifference among the many. First of all, human character was of course destroyed by, by sin, by the very first people. And the Bible confirms that this process of destruction is accelerating rapidly in the end times right it is almost out of control let's go to first timothy chapter 4 verse 1 notice that this is specially applied to the last days to the end of this present age it says the spirit clearly says that in later times some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. In other words, there will be spiritual pressures to turn God's people away from their faith. That's in the invisible realm. And Satan, he often uses people to do so. Bullying, insulting God, blasphemy. And this is getting worse and worse. And the hate for Israel increases at the same time. 2 Timothy 3. Verse 1 and following states, But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. 
hell of times. Why will there be terrible times? The text uh, shows us that because human nature will behave in such a in such a terrible way. I will read it. It says, people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, love, lovers of the pleasures rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. From such people turn away. Importantly, notice these are not people without faith in God. Having a form of godliness. How many times have you heard that I believe in God, but I don't believe in, and then the rest of it comes? It's so common. People making God in their own image. Having a form of godliness, but denying its power. They simply don't let it change them. If we jump to Luke chapter 17, verse 6, 26 and 28, Jesus said that at the end of this age, it would be like the days of Noah and like the days of Lot. I want to turn back for a moment and very briefly look at the, if, uh, if you do it with me, uh, if you turn to Genesis, at what, at what it was like in the days of Noah and what it was like in the days of Lot. The description of the world in the days of Noah, if we go to Genesis chapter 6, verse um, 1 to 4, it says, When men began to increase in number on the earth, and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful and they married any of them that they chose. Sons of God, it says. Sons of God, it refers to angels. Angels who left their assigned area in the spiritual realm relating and living in sexually uh, sexually with uh, with uh, with women humans and the sons of god it says saw that the daughters of men were beautiful and they married any of them they chose then the lord said my spirit will not contend, will not fight with man forever, for he is mortal. His days will be 120 years. The Nephilim, Nephilim were on the earth in those days. Nephilim means the fallen ones. It's the fallen angels. The Nephilim were on the, on the earth on those days and also afterwards. When the sons of God went to the daughters of men and had children by them. They were the heroes of old men of renown. This is absolutely disgusting, right? So what we have here is a picture, what I would call an enormous out of the world pressure 
against the human race. Jesus says that it will be like this in the end times. And even going on, as far as sexual relations between them. Jesus says that in the end of this age, it would be like the days of Noah and like the days of Lot. This satanic pressure that was the primary cause of the other main world events of Noah's day. And then verse 5, it says, The Lord saw how great man's wickedness on the earth had become. And that every inclination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil all the time. This is a completely total corruption of thought life. All this is accelerated by the media and by the movies today which are feeding those things in human minds. They are trying to feed you and me with all that kind of things. Are you aware of this? You see it everywhere. In movies. We are we are almost sometimes taking it for granted that it will contain that it will be there will be a lot of immorality of all kind of things all kind of things that are against God blasphemy violence sexual immorality homosexuality all the time everywhere it's getting worse and worse Genesis 6 verse 12 it says God saw how corrupt the earth had become. All flesh had corrupted its ways. The whole human race. Everybody. It means man as a fleshy being. In other words, the corruption was in man's carnal nature. sexual corruption and perversion and then finally in verse 13 God said to Noah I'm going to put an end to all people for the earth is filled with violence because of them it became longer <laughs> than I had expected a brief recap first of all we have satanic uh, intervention from supernatural realm. Secondly, we have corruption of thought life. Thirdly, sexual corruption and perversion everywhere. And number four, the earth filled with violence. It is everywhere. And if we go to Genesis 19, Lot at this time was living in a city called Sodom. I think most people have heard about Sodom and Gomorrah. The cities of Sodom was called this name because at the time they practiced sodomy. The story begins with that two angels enter it Sodom to warn Lot this man Lot um, of the city's coming destruction right and then like a good man Lot he welcomed them into his house so when the men of Sodom he heard that these two strangers had come they wanted to have sexual relations with them and this is what it says we read in Genesis 9 
verse 4. Before they had gone to bed, that's the Lord and the angels. All the men from every part of the city of Sodom, both young and old, surrounded the house. What shocked me even more when I read this was that all the men, and it was both young and women, all of them, total perversion, completely. And then it says, they called to Lot, where are the men who came in to you tonight, they asked. Bring them out to us that we can have sex with them. Lot went outside to meet them and shut the door behind him and said, No, my friends, don't do this wicked thing. Look, I have two daughters who have never slept with a man. Let me bring them out to you and you can do what you like with them. But don't do anything to these men for they have come under the protection of my roof. Get out of our way, they replied. And they said, This fellow came in here as an alien and now he wants to play the judge. We will treat, treat you worse than them. They kept bringing pressure on Lot and moved forward to break down the door. But the men inside, the angels, they reached out and put Lot's back into the house and shut the door then they struck the men who were at the door of the house young and old with blindness so that they could not find the door so i will summarize this uh, again briefly the 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 standout feature of of sodom was I would call it shameless, aggressive, violent homosexuality. There was no attempt to hide it. Um, they didn't wait for their victims to be to even be willing. They were aggressive, and they were, and and when they were rejected, they became completely violent. So this is just aggression, aggression and violent homosexuality. And I, I would dare to say that there is more to come in the times that we are living in. As all the things getting more and more open, people accept everything. It is going in that direction. So be thankful that scripture has shown us what to expect. But let's not just focus on all the negative. I want to point out two positive aspects of the days of Noah and Lot. Hebrews 11 verse 7 states By faith Noah when warned about things not yet seen in holy fear built an ark to save his family So on the positive side we see that God he warned his servants of the trouble that was coming God's prophetic word is not to scare us it has never been it has never been what he has tried to it is to warn us exactly as he warned Noah so when it says in Matthew 24 as it was in the days of Noah so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man it's a warning that we can make a decision today we can make a decision today. Amen. But in God's warning to, to Noah, 
there was, of course, a whole supernatural element. And the same was true in the story of, of Lot, of course. God needs to give us supernatural warnings. The Holy Spirit will help you and me when we are in Christ with this. I want to turn to a passage in uh, Matthew 24 where Jesus he speaks to his close disciples. At this time he was sitting on the Mount of Olives overlooking uh, um, the temple area. And it says in um, verse 6, that you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. <clears throat> so in, in other words, wars and rumors of wars, of which there are many now for the time we are living in, um, are not a clear indication that the end is near. And then he cont continues in uh, verse 7, he says that, and then nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. And all these things, they are actually increasing. All of this are increasing. And then when labor pains really start, then two things can be said. Firstly, as I said, they will become more and more frequent. More and more intense the closer we get to labor. Second, there is no way to reverse. You cannot hide. You cannot hide. This is the process. Jesus said that when you see these things happen, you can know those things. And then something is being born. What is being born? A new age. A new age. That is what we are looking forward to when we are in Christ. The kingdom of God will be born on earth out of these labor pains. And then it says, then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death. And you will be hated by all nations because of, my, of me or my name. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. <clears throat> but turn for a moment to Luke 21 verse 28. Jesus says in verse 28, He says, when these things begin to take place, here it comes. Stand up and lift up your head because your redemption is drawing near. Amen. God is in control. He does not say that you should escape being afraid 
or height. No, you should lift up your head because your redemption is drawing near. So I think when you are in Christ, we should face this situation as optimists, right? I believe that a very large part of everything that God has, has prophesied in the, in the Bible has already happened. So we should have great confidence that the rest will come to pass in the way God say it will be. And that is good news for you and me in Christ. However, I have to say, if I was a person without any knowledge of God or without any knowledge of Scripture, uh, I, I would understand that. I would say that the glass is uh, half empty now. It is half empty. I, I can see it from the natural man's perspective. Uh, that the glass is half empty. But for you and me in Christ, there's an incredible hope. And the glass is half full. And it's getting more and more full. It will be more and more full. This is what Jesus is saying. I do need that. I do understand that <clears throat> that we need a, that we need a basic understanding of biblical prophecy. It is not an uh, what would you call it unnecessary. It is not an unnecessary luxury or something like that. This is something that we should know about being hungry and thirsty about and speaking about the prophecies from the old testament i will end it today with uh, what peter he said in he said that in um, second peter chapter 1 beginning verse 19 and we have the word of the prophets made more certain and you will do well to pay attention to it as a light shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts so i believe that the prophetic teachings of scripture are indeed a light in a dark place and remember one thing God's shaping process it is ongoing it is ongoing it does not cease us with uh, like a single, a single trial, but it continues throughout our lives. As the people of God, we are in a uh, continuous state of transformation. The Lord models and shapes us. He shapes us and He shapes all the time, all the time, all the things that belongs to him. Look at Israel. Hebrews 11 verse 7 states, By faith Noah, when warned about things 
not yet seen in holy fear built an ark to save his family by his faith he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith this reflects God's ongoing process of molding of shaping of purifying our lives through Christ Amen and Amen
trumpet sound oh may I then in him be found dressed in his righteousness God shapes his people through divine pressure. And this divine work of shaping and forming God's people, it is the way that he does it, whether we like it or not. Hebrews 12:5 reminds us, and have you completely forgotten this word of encouragement? that addresses you as a father addresses his son. It says, my son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline and do not lose heart when he rebukes you. So when God shapes Israel, it is a reflection of his promises, his love, his guidance, of his chosen people including the ecclesia the called out assembly but it is through divine pressure so do not make light of the Lord's discipline he molds us 
He shapes us into the kind of pot that He wants us to be. Sometimes by putting pressure on us, we don't understand. But the very same example as with Israel. Why does he do this? God warned Noah what was coming. God warns his servants about the troubles and struggles and trials that are to come. His prophetic word, it is not to scare us, but to warn us and tell us that we have hope. Our living hope is in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Have the Holy Spirit touched your heart today? It has touched me at my heart. Do you know that you need Jesus? We all need Jesus more than anything. Are you willing to accept that you are a sinner? Will you accept that God takes all of your sins upon himself in your place so that you can be reconciled with him? Will you love him back and accept his open invitation to a life together with him forever? Will you allow him to reveal the truth of all things to you and give you eternal life? Because God, He wants to give you life. He wants to give all of us life. He wants to give you and me abundant life. As it is written when Jesus said that in John 10.10, 10, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Have you accepted Jesus as the Lord and Savior of your life yet? If not, you can do it today. Doesn't matter where you are. Have the Holy Spirit touched your heart today? If so, please say after me now. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, I know that I'm a sinner. I ask you to forgive my sins. Today I will turn from my sins. And by faith I will gratefully receive your gift of salvation. And be born again. I believe that you are the son of man who came to earth in the flesh who died on the cross for my sins and was raised by God from the dead on the third day. I confess with my mouth that you are Lord and Savior. that all your words are true 
and I invite you now into my heart and my life. I believe that you took my sin, guilt and shame on that cross. You redeemed me from going to hell and have given me a place in heaven. A life of purpose on earth and a relationship with my Father. Amen? Amen? If you said this prayer with me and accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we want to welcome you to God's family. And we want to celebrate it with you. Doesn't matter where you are. If you are in the Algarve, the south of Portugal, we want to meet up with you personally. If not, please just text us and write, I have decided to this Portuguese number. It's plus three, five, one for Portugal. Nine, six, two, one, nine, five, 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 five. And we will be in contact with you shortly. So God bless you all. Thank you and uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you.